Visit sayaright.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. Hi, I'm Eric Grant with Sierra. Today we're going to show you how to build a California Dodger. A California Dodger is basically a bimini top on a two-bow frame with side curtains and a front curtain panel that zips onto it so you can remove any curtain that you want. If you want to just go with the front curtain and the side curtains removed, you can do that. It is mostly a clear vinyl application, not as much canvas. This California Dodger uh, comes in a skin kit and underneath is a frame that supports it. It is available as a Tubo Dodger frame kit. And it's the same frame kit that we use for our standard Dodgers. So that is the process. Let's get started and show you how to make this California Dodger. As stated, the California Dodger comes as a skin kit. It does not include the stainless steel frame or fittings. Those can be ordered separately if you do not already have a Tubo Dodger frame installed on your boat. Here is the part number for the Tubo 1-inch Dodger frame kit with rigid supports and handrails. The Dodger frame has been installed on our boat. A link to that tutorial video can be found in the description below. Now it's time to pattern on the frame for our California Dodger top. To make this California Dodger, we're going to use the standard Dodger frame that's available from Sailrite. The only difference is that the handrails that usually go on the outside after patterning will be placed on the inside as shown here and they'll be permanently set up like that. So it's kind of nice because you can use them as a handrail to get in the cabin and you can also hang stuff on them. So if you didn't want this uh, handrail on the inside, what you would do is you would just order these jaw slides and they would go on in lieu of this and you'd still use the same eye ends. So you would order four of these, one here, one in the back, and then obviously on the starboard side as well. But uh, this is the way the kit comes with a handrail like this, so it'll be set up like that. So our frame is set up, it's rigid, we have a separate video showing you exactly how to set up this frame. We're going to measure for the center, and to do that we need to go from joint to joint. So I measure from this joint to this joint, I get 41, which means 20 and a half is our center and I'm going to mark it with a permanent marker. I've already marked it here, but I, I want to show you exactly what we're doing. So that's 20 and a half inches, and we're going to mark it fairly heavy over here so we can see it, and we're going to do the same thing with the forward frame, which we've already done. Next, what we want to do is we want to pre-tension the frame at the center, um, because that the center there's not nearly as much tension on the fabric when it's put up as there are on the sides. So what I like to do first is I like to put my tape measure on the front of the forward bow, measure back to the back bow, and I get 39 and 3 eighths from the back edge. So I'm going to take strapping tape, you can also do this with webbing and a buckle if you'd like, we show that in other videos, but this is one way to pre-tension a bow that's pretty quick. I'm going to take strapping tape, make it go over at the center position, which I've already marked, right in the center, and then strap this to itself on the underside, like so. And then I'm going to go to here at the center position, and I'll mark where uh, the middle here, because we want to tension it to about an inch. So I've got the middle marked. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull this up and I'm going to put pressure on the bow in the middle to uh, shrink this down by about an inch. And then tape it. And I can tell it's about an inch. Whoa! I can tell it's about an inch because my inch mark is back here. I'm going to wrap it around the underside. And then we're going to come up to the forward here, make sure it's under tension here, pull a little bit back on this one, and come around here, and we'll cut it here and strap it to us itself, so tape it down. Now what we should do is we should measure to make sure that we are at least an inch, an inch and a half smaller, and we are, we're 38 and 3 eighths inch, which is perfect. So we can't see the center marks because of the strapping tape, so I'm going to transfer the center mark because I can see through it, it's just not easy to see through it. 
uh, and put it on top of the strapping tape on both bows. So at the side of the Dodger, we need to determine where we want the top to stop. And there is no right or wrong answer to this. You just want it to be fairly level. And you want to use a straight edge like we're using. And once it's level, then what you do is you mark it. And you can tell that we're, we're down below the uh, curve here. And you could take some measurements to make sure that you're level, uh, but you're just trying to go for something that looks level. The boat's on the trailer, so we don't know what level is. We can't use a level, but we can sight off the boat to make sure that looks good. Now, I don't like this first mark, and I used a 3M specialty adhesive remover, so there's my mark. See how nicely it comes off of that? And there's my new mark. So to get these marks on the opposite side, the starboard side, what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure to the deck to where that mark is. And look at that, it's exactly at four foot. Um, now that doesn't mean your boat is symmetrical, but that should get us something about the same. If I measure to here, I get 40 and a half inches to the mark here. So I'm going to try to put those marks in the same spot on the starboard side. If you're working in the heat, you may want to put strapping tape down before you put the double-sided tape on your bows to do patterning. We're not working in any extreme heat, and we also have 3M uh, adhesive remover, so the tape comes off nicely even if it, it gets heated up a little bit. So I'm going to go directly to the bows. Uh, otherwise, you should use the strapping tape as well. There's my mark, so I'm just going to come a little bit underneath that mark. And notice that I'm putting the tape uh, on the side, not directly on the top here because that's basically where I'm going to be marking the pattern material. And I'm going to come across this bow and do the same thing when I get to the other side. Now we're going to do the same thing to the forward bow. We're going to put the tape a little bit towards the front. It doesn't have to be exactly accurate. We're just trying to hold the pattern material with the double-sided tape. So we have Duraskrim pattern material, and we're going to place it on top of this. It's better with two people. I'm going to try it by myself. I haven't peeled off the transfer paper revealing the glue yet. So I'm going to get it in position. I'm going to peel a little bit of this back here to reveal the glue on the aft bow. That way I can stick this uh, corner to it. Hopefully the wind won't blow it out of position. And then I'm going to come across here. I'm not going to peel any off over here. And then we'll peel back a little bit in the, on the forward bow. Again, two people help a ton. Stick that down. We're going to do the same thing over there until we get it semi in position. <laughs> that actually doesn't look too bad. Now you can always peel it up again and re-stick it. And you don't want to pull it too much because you can't actually stretch the Duraskrim, even though it has uh, kind of like a cording inside to help make it stretch resistant. That doesn't look too bad there. I think I'm going to peel this up all the way and kind of put her down temporarily and come over here. And do the same. So what we want is we want the pattern material to uh, go on as flat as possible because what you get in the pattern is what you're going to get in the fabric. So if your pattern looks good then you should be fine. So tension this, put it down. Look at that, it's starting to look good. We have a bubble over there we got to fix. So I'm just going to keep doing this until I get it perfect and then we'll show you what it looks like when we're done here. So I've got it, I've got it actually patterned pretty well, and, and it, if you have a lot of excess pattern material, it is really a pain to pattern. So what I like recommend is I cut off about two to three inches. Uh, I mean, I cut off enough to leave about two or three inches hanging over, uh, and that helps in patterning. If you've got a ton of pattern material up here, you want to start with something oversized, but not so too oversized. So we're going to cut it away, and we're going to check the pattern one more time. 
So you want to do any tweaks now, it's easy to retweak it to try to get as many wrinkles out as possible. Make sure that you're happy with it before you start marking. And that looks pretty good. I think I'm happy with it. Okay, now that we're happy with it, it's time to mark it. First thing you want to do is mark S-O-T for starboard out. And this is the starboard side. We want to mark where we marked on the sides just with a line. You can't see this, but just I'm marking over top of that line that we made. Then we want to mark the center position right over top of that center line. And we want to mark pout, P-O-U-T, port out. And the lines here. Don't strike a line across here. You'll do that on the uh, loft table. Or I'm sorry, your workbench, I should say. Mark that one. And then don't forget to mark the center again. Okay, so this is, we'll just mark here, this is forward. obviously, and this is aft, and I'll mark it in about the same position. Obviously, we shouldn't get confused because we have pout and sout on it. Okay, so now is the tricky part. So now what we have to do is we have to mark for where the seam's going to be. I don't want the seam on top. I want it at a 45 degree. So if you, uh, hopefully you can see this. And I like to run my finger across here, and that kind of gives me a guide. So, right like that. And then when you get to the sides, when we get past the curve here, we're gonna come out a little bit and come towards me. So it, instead of being a 45, it's gonna, because there's a lot of tension here, it's gonna come not to the center or to the outside edge, but close to it. So it kind of transitions a little bit that way. Not much, just a little bit. And I stopped at my mark that I have over here. And we're going to do the same thing to the aft bow. Let's go ahead and mark this. Da, 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 da. Will I run into that same line? Yes, we did. Okay, we're going to go to the other side and do that and do the aft bow as well. So you can see here that it goes a little bit that direction. Not much, just a little bit back here because there's a lot of tension here. All right, believe it or not, we are done patterning. Now we still have to pattern, obviously, for the uh, side curtains, but that's done after the bimini, uh, which really is a bimini. It's a bimini top is done for this California Dodger. Why I'm confusing things. So we're gonna take this off. Now let's take a look at this uh, uh, double-sided tape here and notice how easy it comes off because of the cool weather if it didn't come off well we would use that 3m specialty adhesive remover in a rag one more thing you don't want to leave this on uh, because you just don't want your bows to all of a sudden have a memory of hey i'm tensioned and i'm always tensioned no so watch this bam so take that off as well so we have our pattern now on our table and we're going to do two things here. First, we're going to strike lines on the port and starboard side from those marks that we made on the tubing, which we'll show. And we're going to add a half inch seam allowance to the pattern on the aft edge and the forward edge. So these are the marks that we made here. And there's a mark on the other side. And I didn't want to uh, strike a line while it's on the boat because you'll never get it straight. So we bring it to the table and then we strike a line here. Now this edge, same with the starboard side, this is the port side, does not have a seam allowance added to it. So we're gonna do the same thing to the starboard side here. 
we'll be adding a half inch seam allowance to the forward edge and the aft edge, not to the outer edges. Those have no seam allowance. There are multiple ways to add a half inch seam allowance. I'm gonna use the clear acrylic ruler and I like to position it over the entire curve that I'm doing here. And you can mark the material as long as you're on the half inch line that you struck. So here you can tell that I'm on that mark, so I'm just gonna mark the material. And then uh, at this point, it's starting to go a little bit off. Well, actually, it looks like it's pretty much on there. And then uh, we'll just continue to move it as we go around the perimeter, making sure it's on the half inch as we go. And this actually works quite well. Even though it's staggered there, you'll see the end result is a very nice curve. As long as we're making sure that it is on the half inch and we're almost to the straightaway and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so there, even though there's jagged edges, see how nice this looks? It's actually a half inch, very accurate. Now we're gonna do this on the straight edges and we'll do this to the other side in the same manner. The Dodger frame on our boat had a minimal crown top, so it's almost straight from the curve on the port to starboard side. However, nowadays we put more crown in the frame, which we think is better. So your edges may be slightly more curved than what we show here. The process is the same, whether your bows are more crowned or less crowned. So now we're gonna trim it to size, and we're gonna trim right on these lines that we marked, and the outside lines as well. It's now time to pattern the top. We're gonna to be using Sunbrella Marine Grade Fabric from Sailrite. We have our Sunbrella Marine Grade Fabric on our tabletop, and we're gonna place the pattern as close to the bottom edge as we can. Um, like that. And we're gonna put a few weighted sandbags on it to keep the pattern in place. So you can mark around it if you'd like. I'm using a soapstone pencil. And then you can cut afterwards. Uh, this works well, as you can see, depending on the color of the fabric. Or you can uh, use a hot knife and cut with a pattern on top, which is what I think we're gonna do. So I'm gonna take my tempered cutting glass and put it underneath this area. And then I'm gonna use the serrated edge hot knife and heat it up, it only takes a few seconds. And I'm gonna hold the pattern material down as I cut around the perimeter. Now, why am I using a hot knife? Well, because we're gonna have a semi-flat filled seam and I do not want those edges to unravel. Um, so that's why we're using a hot knife. So we're gonna do this all around the perimeter Now, Sarah does have two hot knives. We have this edge hot knife that is battery powered. I love it. It's a little bit more expensive. And then we have a corded one. It works uh, as well, but it is tethered with an electrical cord. It's your choice. Okay, so it's all cut. We need to put on our markings with the soapstone pencil. So this side's sout. So I'm gonna lift up the pattern material and write sout right on the fabric. This is the forward. I'm gonna write that here. And also the center line, that's very important. So the center line's right here. We didn't show marking sout and forward. also aft and the center position on that side, but you need to do that. Now I mark the center position, but I like to cut a triangle out at that center position. That way if it ever wants to come off, it won't. I'm gonna do that to the aft side as well. The California Dodger will have two hang down tails at the front and the aft. 
The hang down tail, as seen here, is excellent for applications where a curtain is going to be uh, secured. You can see the zipper here, and the hang down tail basically hides that zipper. This hang down tail has no zipper, but it hangs beautifully even when coming around the corner. Now we'll show you how to make it. So I'm going to do my um, hang down tails, and uh, what I want to do is get a basic, uh, I think it's width, uh, from port to starboard, following that edge that we just cut. So I'm basically just using a soft tape measure and I get uh, 78 inches. So I'm going to make mine 80 inches. So this is not the uh, top. This is actually uh, more fabric that has not been marked. I have it at the edge of the table. My table is 72 inches, so I just need to go 8 inches beyond this mark. I always use a table in reference to measuring. It just makes things a lot easier. So I'm going to move it and mark it 8 inches more. So there's my 72 inch mark. I'm going to put the clear acrylic ruler at 8 because we want our hang down tails to be uh, 6 inches. So basically this is the end and these are 6 inches so we just mark down the length and we have our uh, perfect rectangle for a hang down tail. Now we need two of these, one for the, uh, uh, for the forward portion and the aft portion, the stern and the bow of our top. So now I've got two. This is the factory edge. It's already sealed, so I don't have to worry about that. Again, I'd like to use a hot knife, so I'm gonna cut this out with a serrated edge hot knife with a tempered cutting glass on the bottom side. It helps to distribute the heat nicely just to the fabric. It doesn't suck up any of the heat, and it also makes for a smooth cutting surface. Bam. These are our hang down tails, and uh, we're gonna put, uh, 3 8 inch uh, seam stick for uh, canvas down one of the long edges of each of them. They're going to be folded in half to make them 3 inches instead of 6 inches. Before I take off my uh, seam stick, I'm going to pre-fold it. And the way I like to do that is I use a sacrificial table with a hard edge and I actually just crease it like that. And uh, that way it has a little bit of a memory because I want these to be pretty accurate. So I'm going to do this to both of them, creasing it so that it's basically three inches. Now we can peel off the transfer paper, and I'm just going to peel it all the way off of the edge. And since it's creased, it should just be a matter of basting it together. And I will use the Serac Canvas Patterning Ruler just to make sure it's basted well and crease it one more time. So we're going to do this to both of the uh, hang down tails. In this chapter we'll be creating the zippered pockets for our tubing. Okay we've got our top material, it says pout, this is the aft side, laid up on top of our fabric. We just cut the hang down tails from here. I'm going to put a tempered cutting glass under here. We're going to cut our pockets. So I'm going to put this over here and I'll just start cutting right alongside this fabric because I'm using this instead of the pattern. We have to follow this shape. So even though this side looks perfectly straight, it may not be. Um, and especially the corners are obviously not straight. So what we'll do is we'll come up to this corner following the shape. And the pockets for this are actually going to be uh, four inches in width. I'm just going to cut right off of that. So if I take my clear acrylic ruler and I put it on this corner here, that would be right to there. So let's cut up to that point. And then what I'm going to do is cut the other side, so cut to the other corner in the same manner. And so I'm going to stop right about there. It's a little bit past four inches. So we're going to continue to cut this way and do the same thing at the other corner. And we'll show you what's next. Okay, it's cut, but don't move it yet. We got to mark the center. So I'm just going to take my scissors and do this. So now that's, that's the same. And then we, I'm going to mark aft as well, because I don't want to get confused. These are kind of bonded together, so 
lift it up here like that. Mark aft, and we're going to mark pout. Make sure you do it within the four inches area and south. Now we're going to move this top fabric here out of the way because we can't use this anymore for this aft edge. We have to do the same thing to the forward edge, but we need to follow this, um, this shape we have in this and it needs to be perpendicular um, to this edge, or I should say parallel to this edge, but we have to hold our straight edge perpendicular. Okay, to do this, I'm gonna use uh, the Scryball uh, pencil. Um, this doesn't come off this umbrella very well, though it will if you use a uh, adhesive remover. And I wanna follow this edge, so I'm using the clear acrylic ruler. Let's see, if you can see, it actually goes this way. You can see the four inches is right here in this hole. So I'm gonna put this in here. The nice thing about this is it has a sharp point and you can put it in a pencil sharpener. So uh, I'm just gonna follow this edge. This keeps it perpendicular to that edge as I go. And I do take my time doing this. So we're gonna do this all the way down this edge and that follows this. This is parallel to this edge now because I'm perpendicular to it with my tool. Okay. Now the canvas patterning ruler doesn't do a very good job when you run out of fabric so I just basically follow this up and I kind of say hey that's what it looks like it should go and I go there even though we're probably not going to use all this fabric. I'm going to put a, a tempered cutting glass underneath this. We're going to cut this out. And we can't use this for the forward side. We shouldn't use it for the forward side because it may be different. So we're going to cut this out with a hot knife right on top of that line. I guarantee it will be different. So there's our four inch mark. We're just going to cut up to this arch that we have here like that. Now this is the forward edge and I'm going to see if it's the same shape. It probably isn't, but uh, Boy, it should be nice. Yeah, see, it's, it's definitely not. So we have to do the exact same thing with this, the forward edge. So I'm going to get as close to the uh, edge as possible so I don't waste fabric. And we will repeat those steps yet again. So in the next step, we're going to sew on a one inch binding to the Vislon zipper. This is a Lin zip zipper available from Sailrite. And you'll notice that this doesn't go all the way to the end because this is just extra zipper that we're going to have to cut off. Um, so I've, I've come to approximately where I need to cut it off. The slider puller is up. So this will go on so that the slider is over here and the starter box is all the way over here. Now what I like to do for this type of a California Dodger is I like to have one continuous zipper because the, do the, the Dodger is still easy to put on, um, but you wanna have a starter box on one side, whether it be the port and starboard, this will be the uh, port side. And then on the other side, this is the aft, you wanna have the starter box on the completely opposite end, whether it be starboard or port. So we have a starter box over there and then diagonally, we have a starter box over here. So you can see that the binding over there is on towards the top. So that means that we want the binding to be on towards the top over here with the starter box here. So why do we put the starter box on one corner and then the opposite corner? Because when you go to zip it on, you can zip on and start in, on either the port or starboard side, and then you can come to the front or the forward portion and you can start on the starboard side because it's hard to get it zipped on because it's super tight and then once they're started zip and they're tight and and it's easy to do so this zipper is longer than the side and you can kind of do that by it's not not going to go all the way to the edge it's actually going to stop here but i like to go all the way to the edge so i only need to put binding on up to about that point right there and and uh, I'm going to use a quarter inch seam stick for a canvas and upholstery because we don't want that glue to get close to the zipper and I'm going to put it extremely close to the uh, raw edge of this zipper flange. 
I'm going to peel off the transfer paper and I just go ahead and peel it all the way off and then we can stick our uh, one inch bias binding down. This bias binding, a bias binding will always have seams like this going diagonally 45 degrees because it's obviously cut on the bias. Um, and we want to stick it so that uh, there's about that much gap and I'm not measuring it, I'm just uh, siding it, but we want to be consistent down the entire length of the zipper. That gives us room, if you pull the slider, for the slider to move, see, without touching the binding, which makes it easier to slide the, the slider. So we're going to uh, base this on all the way to the starter box. So we're just going to cut this off with a hot knife to seal the edge, and I go just a teeny bit past the zipper, because I don't obviously want to cut the zipper. Okay, I'm going to use a standard foot on this, and I want to put the stitch right close to that edge. Um, so I'm going to move the needle to the right. I'm sewing in straight stitch. I'm sewing in maximum stitch length of six millimeters. And I'm going to lower the foot. And we're going to do a little bit of reversing here. Now I'm next to the box right here, the starter box. So this will be a little bit off. Do some reversing. And then as soon as I get past that starter box, I'm going to make sure that presser foot is up against the teeth like that. Now I can sew down its length. Just keep this foot up against the uh, teeth and you should get a nice, beautiful straight stitch. We're going to move these out of the way for now. The top is facing with the outside up pout and souter visible. We're going to flip it upside down. This is the underside surface. Now with these pockets, they're going to have the zipper stop right at the curve and then we're going to leave excess fabric and we're going to snap it to the frame which gives us a corner without wrinkles. Um, this is a new approach. Here's a look ahead at this top after it's finished. It's not uncommon to see some wrinkles in a Bimini and Dodger's top along the curved sides. However, using this new approach perfected by myself after several prototypes, those common wrinkles are almost totally eliminated, as you can see here. So we need to determine where the curve goes because we're going to have a pocket here and the zipper is going to stop here. We're going to have a, a loose piece of fabric that's snapped to the frame which makes for a nice tight corner. So if I put a straight edge on this edge, I can see that the curve's beginning uh, right about here, and I'd like to go approximately one inch past that, so I'm gonna go about to there. For us, that leaves about eight inches from here to here, um, but that depends on how far your uh, top comes down the side of your frame. Um, so basically, one inch past where this, the curve begins is where I wanna mark the fabric, approximately one inch. So since we determined that it starts at eight, eight inches for us, we're going to do that to all the corners and just measure at eight inches and mark the fabric along this edge. So this is the underside of the fabric, as we discussed earlier, and I'm going to strike a line on it now uh, five inches away from this edge. So I'm going to use my clear acrylic ruler and make sure that it's up against the edge. Uh, to that spot, except for I'm not going to have it uh, be five inches here. I'm actually going to let it just kind of sit there because I don't want it too much stress on the zipper here. So as you can see, this is five inches from here all the way to here. It's pretty much straight. And I'm going to strike a line with my soapstone. And I will be using this later on. This edge may not be perfectly straight. The line should be perfectly parallel to it, no matter if it has curve or not. Now we're doing the same thing on the other side here, five inches up from this edge and we're edge and we're not following the curve at the end. We're actually going to let the zipper go in that direction because it's basically put on straight. So I've taken my zipper and now I don't have my pocket sewn onto this, but I'm going to run the zipper all the way to the end of this line, which is right here. And I'm going to hold it in place and then I'm going to walk it all the way to this side. Notice that the binding is up. This is exactly how it'll be sewn on to the top. And now I know right where it should be cut, which is right there. 
So I'm going to cut it at that juncture, maybe a teeny bit long, like that. Now don't forget your slider. We didn't, we don't have our slider on, but we can easily put that on. And then I'm going to touch the ends. I'm not going to touch the teeth because if I do, then they'll be melted together. But I just want to make sure this doesn't unravel. Okay, now let's go ahead and put the slider. Well, we can do the, that later. I think I'd, I'll put the slider on later, but I want to take it off and keep it. Now we're going to repeat the process on this side. The binding is up facing towards the middle of the canvas. Now the only issue about doing this is that I don't have any reversing here and I don't want to sew this after it's on the cover because then I'll be sewing through the cover. So I'm actually going to take this to the sewing machine and do some reversing here to lock this in place on the zipper. I'm going to put my needle in the left side because I'm going to feed it in this direction. And I'm just going to do a little bit of reversing here. Hold on to your trailers so you don't get a jam. That should do it. We'll do that to the second one as well. Okay, so I'm still with the wrong side uh, facing up. Those, this is the line we just struck, and these are my pockets. This says forward, and if you flip it over, this says forward. So make sure you get up the right, right side on the right side. I'm gonna match it up to my center mark, and then I'm gonna walk it over here. And here is my mark, you can see it right there, but you can also see this mark up here. So we're just going to transfer that onto here where the zipper is going to basically stop. So directly up from that because that's where the mark is. And then over here, it would be right there. So we're going to do that with the aft side as well. Taking one inch from this edge at uh, the, where the zipper starts. So right here, here's my one inch slot. And I'm just going to mark across this edge. Every time I hit, hit um, some of the burnt fabric with the, with the hot knife, it kind of jolts on me. This will be uh, used for a single hem. We're going to do this. Oh, and re remember, this is not on the part that has the notch. This is on the upward uh, part of the curve. This is done on the inside edge. This is the uh, notch. So this edge, and we'll do it over here on this edge. I actually should have gone all the way to the edge. I need this hem to go uh, all the way through this edge. So we're just adding that to this. There we go. Here's a little tip. The hot knife causes little burnt nubbings or burrs. And you use the Sayerite canvas patterning ruler and it doesn't glide over it. A little tip is to actually go like this, pull your fabric through it takes all of those off, and then when you use it, it glides so much more smoothly. Now these little notches are not going to be visible because they're going to be on the other side. So you could either transfer your mark, or you can just cut a little triangle out, like we just did here. And then when this gets folded down, you can see where that zipper goes. So we're going to do that on all those notches, and then we're going to put uh, seam stick basting tape. Uh, this is the, uh, the 3 8 inch, this is part number 129, and we're going to put it fairly close to that edge, but not um, right up against the edge, all the way down each pocket, this forward pocket and the aft pocket. We're going to peel off of the transfer paper. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hem this down and this creates a half inch single hem. Our edge is already hot knifed, though this, this uh, hem will be basically buried under a zipper. Not at this juncture, but at this juncture. This is actually going to be left uh, exposed, but it's going to be up against the top. Okay. So now um, it doesn't want to take that curve. And some umbrella fabric can be creased nicely with the Sarek canvas patterning ruler. So it actually wants to stay basted because we're actually pressing on the glue and we're creasing the fabric at the same time. 
We're going to do that to this pocket and also to this pocket. Now we're going to put the basting tape quarter inch on the uh, flange here. Don't want to put it on this side where the binding is has the folded edge. You want to put it on the same side, the finished side basically. Um, this is where it's going to be basted to the pocket. We've already done it to this one. Now we can peel off the transfer paper and I'm going to only peel it off to about two foot. And we're going to start it right here and I'm going to have this, the flange be right up against the raw edge of our fold. So that's how we're tracking this and keeping it consistent. And as you can see, we started right at the notch and here's what it'll look like when it's done. So we're going to baste it onto this. I think this is the forward pocket, but we'll be doing the same thing to the aft pocket. You need to use the correct length zipper. We cut one for the forward and one for the aft, so don't get them mixed up. So after it's basted on, flip it over and check to make sure that the fabric is pretty consistent on the whole length of the zipper, that it doesn't deviate in or out, because uh, you can modify it before you sew it. Ours looks like it's really well done, so we can take it to the machine and sew it now. I like to sew not with the hem up, but with the hem down on this, because we have a good crease in it. And I'll start here at the edge here, and I moved my needle to the left, it's already in the left position, and I want to put this, because I know where it's going to fall, see the center foot of our Ultrafeed LSZ? We're going to put this so that it's not right on the edge of the uh, center foot, but uh, slightly uh, uh, into this foot, because that's where the stitch will fall when, it, when we come beside the zipper. No reason to do any reversing here, because we're going to finish this edge. So we're going to sew down here, and we're going to go slow, because everybody's going to see this stitch. We're going to slow down the speed of the sewing machine with the Worker Bee Power Pack system, so that uh, we can be very precise. No matter how hard I press on the foot treadle, it'll only go to that speed. Now when I get to the zipper, see how the foot's walking beside the starter box? I want to do some reversing here. So I'm going to reverse into that flange, the end of the flange. And I want to do uh, quite a bit of reversing here because this will have some stress on it. That should do it. So now I want to make sure that this presser foot comes up against the edge of the zipper and I can turn up the speed of the Worker Bee Power Pack system because we're basically going to be right alongside of that zipper. Pretty easy. Now when we come to the end we need to do some reversing and we'll show you that. So I'm going to turn down the speed again. I'm going to go like a quarter and we're going to sew. And we're going to do some reversing here. A couple times. And then we're just going to follow this edge. And no need to do any reversing at the end because it is going to be hemmed or a flange put over it. There we go. We'll do the same thing with the uh, other pocket. I'm going to take off this half of the zipper because we're going to put the slide on. And obviously the slide goes on with the box side, not the post. This is the uh, post side. So it goes on like this because this, we want this to, the, the slider puller to be out and this the fat end would be up it's just natural you know you everybody knows how a zipper basically works and there we go and you might as well put this side back on so we don't lose it now we need to put stops on the end these are ykk uh snap caps, I believe they call them, and they're great for uh, number 10 Vislon zippers, even this lens zip. I'm going to put it on one tooth away from the end, and they basically just go over the tooth, 
You can also use stainless steel stops, but I just think these are cool. So I'll start it on like that. And see, it, it looks like it's snapped on, but it's not because it's not flush with the top. So you just push a little bit more. Now it's on. And we'll put one on this side as well, in the same manner. And uh, then we'll show you what it does when you zip the zipper up to it. Now with those stops in place, bam, your zipper comes up to it. It almost looks like a factory uh, edge. Uh, there's a little bit of raveling there. We're gonna touch it with a hot knife. Now here's why we measured that five inches up from the edge. Look at that. It's almost perfectly five inches. It's a little bit off, but very close. Now we can sew the hang down tail and the pockets to the top. This is the top. This is the line we struck five inches from the edge. We want that to be down. We want the pout and the sout and the aft and the forward. Let's turn it around because you're used to seeing it with a forward facing me to be up as it is. So now we take uh, the hang down tail and its folded edge, which is here, is up. But we really should find the center of it. So I'm going to fold both of these in half to find the middle. And then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut. This is the uh, raw edge. Bam, like that. Now we know exactly where the center is. Okay, before we can base this on, this one goes over to the other side. We need to put a 3 8 inch seam stick down this edge. And this I like to keep it very close to this edge because I don't want this double sided tape to show up when I sew this together. So I'm putting it almost on top of that edge. And I'm going to do this, um, we're, we're going to do the forward edge because the process for the aft edge is exactly the same. So we'll just show this edge. I like to use the canvas patterning ruler on the double sided tape because I really want this to stick well. And then I'm going to peel it up to the halfway point. Okay, So we're going to peel up the transfer paper and I'm going to stop here. And then I'm going to take my tail, doesn't matter if it's this side or if it's that side. We're going to put this right on top of that to match up mark. And we're going to make sure this edge is matched up and I'm going to baste in this direction first and then we'll base the opposite half going the other way. Now when you get to the curve, it's not going to want to baste down as nice as it is the straight sides. It's going to want to wrinkle because anytime you take a curve, the fabric wants to do odd things. But this is a fairly gentle curve, so I don't even think I need to put any notches in it. If I do, if, if I wanted to let it take it a little bit better, I would put a few little notches only in the, in the tail, uh, right at the extreme part of the curve. So this will help a little bit. I don't know if it's totally necessary, but uh, I just want to show the process. You don't want to go deeper than your seam allowance. So that kind of splits it a little bit, but it probably wasn't necessary. Now this goes over the edge. Don't worry about that. Leave it for now. Okay, we're going to do the same thing over here. So now I'm going to put double sided tape um, on this part again, very close to that edge because I don't want it to show up again. And we're going to base the pocket over top of the hang down tail. Again, I'm going to make sure it sticks well. Okay, before we base this on, this is the sout, it's facing up, and this is sout. So we're working with the right sides, not that that's important right now, but we need to finish this edge. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 3 8 inch basting tape on this edge, and we are going to fold it back. It's going to be folded a little bit strange, so I peel off the transfer paper, and I'm going to fold it so that it has a about a 5 8 inch hang over here and this edge is flush. So like that and if you measure this you can see that that is that's actually about a half inch which is fine. Okay so that gives us and then we're going to sew this but we want to do that to this end as well. So I'm going to do the same thing here. 
So there's my fold. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn it up so that the hem is down. And I think I'll just put it right in the center of that outside foot. And I'm going to go center. Uh, yeah, I'll center my needle. I can, you can sew anywhere you want here, but I guess what I'm trying to do is make it like this. So I'm going to put my needle to the right. So it's very similar. I'm going to do a little bit of reversing here. Not going too deep into the assembly because that will be visible. If it goes too deep and then a little bit of reversing here. And that should do it. We're going to do the same thing to the other end and the other pocket. Now we can peel off the transfer paper to the middle position, which is right there. And I, I'm going to start basting at the middle position. Oops, don't want to do that. That's a bad thing. You want to have the writing up, sout, sout. Writing must be up. That would have been muy malo. And then we're going to match up this edge and baste all the way to the corner. When you get to that corner, it's going to want to um, Shape's going to want to make it do weird things, but you're going to force it to match it up to the edge. So I'm kind of forcing the fabric to take that turn. There we go. Then we're going to do the same thing down here. We're going to put the machine in center and we're going to put a magnetic guide. I like to put it like this, right on the half inch mark of the needle plate. Bam, like that, directly across from the needle. Now this double-sided tape here, this is excess, so I'm going to peel it off and break it. Ugh, hopefully, Ugh, it's got a mylar center. And we're going to start sewing at this edge. There's where the top is, so I want to do some reversing there. I can feel it. So when I get to there, now I'm in the top, I'm going to do a little bit of reversing and I'm going to I'll leave my speed down of the worker B. So we want to sew at a half inch all the way down this side. Try to be as accurate as possible because this will uh, be visible if you're not. Now I'm pretty much the straightaway. Since we're at the straightaway, I'm going to turn the worker bee all the way to the max so I can go a little bit faster. You may not want to do that, but I want to get this done. And I can pretty much easily guide it here. Okay, we're going to sew down this whole whole edge in the same manner. And then we'll show you what's next. Okay, so now make sure you have a bobbin that's pretty full because we're going to do a top stitch. So I'm going to move my magnetic guide and I'm going to go back to the beginning. And we're going to um, we're going to splay this out. Okay. So now we're working like that. And you can see that we're folded right on that first stitch. And I want to put my top stitch up here so water runs off. I don't want to put my, my seam allowance underneath the tail. I want to put it into the top, as you can see here. Let's see if I can show you. So see how my seam allowance, which is this half inch, is into the top? That's where I want it. Now, at the curve, it's a little bit more difficult to get everything to lay flat. I'm going to put uh, this first stitch right on the center foot on the uh, right side. And we're going to start our stitch in here and I'm going to pull both left and right as I go. So I want to do some reversing here. And then you want to splay this out. See my needle's buried so I can make adjustments. I don't like the way that it's all tucked into here. So I'm, there we go. So now I've pulled it nice and flat. So it's against that first stitch and I'll sew up to that point. Now everybody's going to see this, so take your time. 
fact, I'm going to turn down the worker bee power pack system so I don't ever have to go fast here. I want this to be really accurate. Wow, that is nice. Now I'm going to stop with my needle buried so I can position the fabric and I can feel my tails in the correct spot. I'm going to splay this out and I'm going to sew small sections because I'm on this curve. I'm going to bury my needle. I'm going to splay it out, sew a small section once it's splayed out. Until I get past this curve and then it all becomes pretty easy. Bury my needle, pull it out, make sure it's nice and flat. And so, bury my needle. Now I'm pretty much to the straightaway. I just have to make sure the fabric is uh, feeding in nice and straight now. And that is our top stitch for our semi flat filled seam. This is us at the end where we do some reversing. Now we'll do the same thing to the opposite side, the aft side for us. We're not going to show that. Next up, we'll sew the inside pocket zipper to the top. Now you probably can't tell, but this is the underside. And you can see our pout on the pocket because they've been reversed around and they'll actually come back to the underside like this. And this is our tail over here. So we got everything on appropriately. This kind of flips the panel to the underside. So on both pockets, what I'm going to do now is this binding that we sewed onto the zipper will now be basted right where that five inch line is. And if you look over here, so there's the line that we drew earlier, the five inches. And look at that. It's almost perfect when you lay it nice and flat. I'm going to use the 3 8 inch basting tape here because I'm not close to any of the zipper's teeth. So, and then this will just stick better. So I'm going to stick it right on the binding and I'm going to go all the way to the end of the binding with this and we'll obviously do the exact same thing for the aft side as well as the this side. I'm only going to show one side. So we'll peel off the transfer paper, revealing that glue. And then I actually like to start kind of in the center. Doesn't matter, but that's where I like to start and baste out. So I'm going to match it up to that line. And if you've been accurate with everything, it should be perfect. Now we're not really following this curve. You know, we kind of ignored that curve at the end of this line here. And that's good because that relieves some of the stress on the end of the zipper. And these are locking um, zippers. So this slider does not pull unless you pull on the uh, puller itself. It locks in place, which makes it nice and secure. So we're going to baste it to this end and then we're going to sew it. I'm going to use the Serrate Canvas patterning ruler and press down hard. This actually, there's a lot of stress against this. And uh, we, that's one of the reasons I, I drew a line on this. We can use that as a reference to make sure it's nothing is moving as we take it to the machine and sew. So I recommend that you press it down well. I'm going to relieve the stress even more by unzipping this half, which basically allows this to just rest in the middle. I'd like to have it on, zipped on when I baste it in place like I did. But now I can take it to the machine and I don't have to worry about this pulling against the zipper and it not moving out of position. Okay, we want to sew to the left side of the inside foot and I want to move my needle to the left to get close to that binding edge. And we don't want to sew into the top. We want to sew only into the binding so that we're going through three layers of canvas. Because if you put a needle hole in the um, top, it's prone to leak a little bit. So I'm going to do some reversing here. 
because we want this to be nice and secure, but I'm not going to go off of the binding. One more. There we go. And we're going to watch to make sure that we're still on the line as we sew this. When we get to the other end, we're going to do some reversing there, being careful not to sew into the single layer of umbrella top material. Then we're going to repeat this for the other side. We're not going to show that. In this chapter, we'll sew binding around the top. Now we're going to take the tails and they need to be cut off. And this is the edge of the uh, top. So all I do is I take my clear acrylic ruler and I line it up with that edge. And things aren't sitting perfectly flat, but that's okay. This is close enough. And I strike a line here and I'll actually curve it. Now I like to make a turn here because we're going to sew binding onto this edge and it's going to come around to this. And uh, you can use a cup or uh, this is a spray can of glue and just make a curve. That way the binding is easy to go around that turn. Make any kind of curve you want really. I'm going to put the glass under here and cut it with a hot knife. So uh, we're going to do the same thing to all of the uh, hang down tails. There we go. This is the aft uh, edge and to sew binding on we can either start in the middle and overlap it or sometimes I like to actually start it where there's a seam going across. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the binding here and go around this way and then it'll overlap kind of in an inconspicuous area. We're going to start there. I have my binding in the swing away one inch binder. This is a one inch binding. It's bias. I'm going to sew a zigzag. Now I'm probably not going to sew five millimeter. I'm probably going to sew more like a four millimeter zigzag. And I also want to reduce the stitch length. I think it just looks better, but you don't have to. You can sew a straight stitch just as well, but I never want to sew a zigzag without testing. So I'm going to put this in here and see if it uh, hits the, uh, the binding on both sides. Mm. So it's off of that one side, so I'm going to reduce the stitch length to maybe three. And I'm going to move the binder a little bit closer to the presser foot. Okay. Mm, now it's actually touching the foot, not good. There we go, we're just as close as possible. I need to reduce the stitch length, I think. Yeah, a little bit. I'll reduce it a little bit. In reverse, I'll make it a little bit smaller. Let's see what that looks like. Let's take a look at it. So I have a pretty small zigzag, but it is in the binding nicely. And I think it just looks great. So you can do a six millimeter straight stitch or a zigzag. The nice thing about a zigzag is it almost always catches the edge of the fabric if it's not centered well. Okay. All right, originally we talked about uh, starting the binding uh, at this seam, but after rethinking it, I don't want to start the binding on something that's already thick. So I either start it over here or I start it here. I'm going to start it here and then when we come around we can overlap it in, in a one layer assembly rather than multiple layers at the semi-flat filled seam. So we're going to put our binder over and uh, this end has already been cut with a hot knife and we will start it so that it feeds and starts right back here away from all that uh, assembly and we have it set up in zigzag like we talked about. And there's no reason to really do any reversing here because this is going to have a uh, binding uh, placed over the end when we come around the entire uh, top. So we're going to sew it around the entire perimeter like this and then uh, show you what's next. Make sure you keep your assembly well into the exiting point of the binder. Don't pay attention to this point here because this will uh, make it so that this fabric is not pushed all the way into the fold. Now when I get to this turn, 
What I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm pushing this assembly well into the exiting point of the binder. Now I'm pretty much to a straightaway, so I'm going to straighten out my fabric. If I feed the fabric here, it's not going to sew it. But if I feed the fabric well into the exiting point of the binder, it's going to sew it beautifully. I'm going to turn up the uh, worker bee so it sews a little bit faster, but not full speed. So we're going to sew all the way around in this manner, and when we get back to the beginning point, I'll show you what we'll do there. Okay, so we're finally getting ready to uh, come to the beginning point of where we started. We're going to round this corner first. I'm going to shove that corner deep into the exiting point of the binder. Even if I get a little wrinkle here, that's good, actually, because that means we're stuffed into the fold. Okay, so here's our beginning point where we started, and right now our binder is uh, about an inch or so over that point, so this is a good spot, spot to stop. We want about an inch of overlap, so that means I'm going to cut it there, and I want to cut it with a hot knife. So I'm going to come across here and I'm going to cut it perpendicular to the edges with a hot knife to keep it from unraveling, because this is going to be exposed on top. So there we go. Okay. So as you can see, we have about an inch of overlap. So I'm going to sew a little bit further into this assembly using the binder. Okay, so now we're coming to the junction. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bury my needle and I'm going to lift my foot and pull this away, okay? Now, I don't necessarily need to lift my foot. I'm not sure why I did that. I'm going to lower my foot. I'm so used to it. I just did it. I like to take a screwdriver now, now the binder's out of the way, because I can control where this ends, and I want it pushed up as close to this edge as possible. So I'm going to basically hold this here, and I'm going to guide this so that it sews in the same line. Keep this up against the edge. Nice. Still looks good, so go slow here. Now I'm back over into the old piece. Now I'm going to just do a little bit of reversing to lock it in place. And that completes it and gives us a pretty good looking edge. It's almost pushed up against it completely and so it's almost smooth, uh, a smooth transition. It's not perfect because it's, it's, it's thicker uh, under here than it is over here, but that's good. And we're ready for the next step. In this next step, we will be adding zippers on the port and starboard side of the top for the window curtain that will be zipped onto the top later on. However, we found that dropping the zipper closer to the sides of the top would have resulted in a better looking top when the side curtains were attached. As you can see here, we sewed our zipper in a little bit too high, then we added a second row of stitches just to reinforce it, but it's still too high and it creates a lip here. Had we moved it down three quarter of an inch, this would have been reduced. That modification will be discussed. Okay, this is, uh, what is this? This is the starboard side, but we're gonna do the same thing to the port side. Uh, what I wanna do is I wanna put a zipper on and that zipper uh, will have binding on it and I wanna mark a line that is two and three quarter inches uh, from the uh, edge. So I'm just using the soapstone to mark it at two and three quarter inches, and we can extend that line a little bit. We want to go two inches uh, from this uh, uh, top stitch on the sides. So two inches, I'll show you over here. So here's the top stitch right here, and two inches is a safe area. So we're going to stop it right there, and two inches over here puts us right there. So now with this zipper, I have a double pull slider so that we can unzip the, the uh, panel, the glass panel from the inside or the outside. But uh, I want to put on a... Um, 
binding to the edge um, before I put that on. This is our starter box and we want to put the box on the top and then the pin will be on the enclosure uh, side panel so it just slides into the box. And this is the forward side and this is the aft. And I like to put the starter uh, box on the forward edge so that uh, when, it, when you zip it on, this comes back here to the back and rests there. So that means I need to put binding because we've got to reinforce the zipper since we didn't use a flange like we do on a lot of our Bimini's and Dodgers. So I'm going to use a hot knife and I'm going to touch the end of the binding. This is the one inch uh, umbrella binding. That heats it so it doesn't unravel. I don't know if I got it there. And this is going to be basted onto the zipper like we did previously. So I'm going to put a quarter inch seam stick on the zipper. And we are going to cut this zipper to size. Might as well cut it now. Let's just take these out of the way, the slider. We'll put that on a little bit later on. So we, we know where we're going to cut it and we'll use scissors and cut it right here. Okay. Then I'm going to touch the edge to make sure that it doesn't unravel. Good. And we'll put the seam stick on there. We will show sewing the binding on the zipper's flange, then we will sew only one stitch in the top along the edge of the binding. However, we also found here that it would have been better to sew the binding and zipper to the top with two stitches in the top for a more secure zipper for the side curtains. Good, we'll peel this off. And we'll put this on so that it overlaps just a little bit. And again, we want it spaced a little bit away from the teeth and we want it to go on nice and straight. We're gonna put the machine back in six millimeter uh, and straight stitch. And we are going to sew um, with a needle to the right. And we will do some reversing here. As we already mentioned, we probably would have skipped this step and actually taken this full assembly to the top and sewn it on with two stitches. And sew down to the box and do some reversing there. We're going to flip this over and we're going to put the 3 8 inch basting tape on the acrylic binding on this side. I break it with my fingers because it's easy to peel it up with the edge like this. And then remember the starter goes to the front. This is the front. This is the aft. Bow aft. And I'm going to put it right on my line. This line is two and three quarters inches up from the edge. Like that. We're going to instead put it two inches up from the edge. Good. And we will take this over and sew it. And then we're going to do the same thing on the pout, a port side. <laughs> we're going to put the needle in the left position because we're going to be sewing to the left side of that binding. And remember, we're not going to sew off of the binding. And we're going to use this foot as our guide, the center foot. And we'll do some reversing here. And we're making sure that it's on the line as we sew. Now having this binding strip in here um, kind of reinforces that. That's why we don't put a, a, a facing on the edge like we do on often many of our other videos. Because this reinforces it and makes it look nice. And then we'll reverse at the end and make sure that we stay on the binding. There we go. We're going to slide the slider back on so we don't lose it. Remember it's a locking slider so you have to pull on the tab to get it to move. 
and we're going to put the other side on with the tab and we're going to put um, stops on this but not yet we'll put the stops on after we have the enclosure panel done i didn't cut this side so we're just going to leave it long like that now we're going to do the same thing to the uh, port side to the top we'll now sew on the front zipper for its curtain Here's a look ahead at that zipper, which attaches the front curtain. Okay, as you can see, this says forward, which is very important because you want to do this zipper on the correct side. A double pull slider means we can open it from the inside and the outside, which is uh, good. What we want to do at this, I believe, is the south side. It says S-O-U-T, starboard. <laughs> we want to measure over about two inches from the edge here. We're gonna mark it here. And then we're gonna do the same thing over on the port side. I'm gonna separate the halves of this zipper just cause it makes it easier for basting. And I'm going to take the side with the starter box, not the pin. So the pin we're gonna set aside now I have a starter box and pin over here on this side, uh, on this forward side, and I think I want that starter box to be on the same side, though it doesn't matter. I mean, you could have it on the opposite side. So because of that, it does matter which side I put the double-sided tape on. This is gonna go on the hang down tail like that, obviously to our two inch point. So this is the side that needs the double-sided tape. And we're gonna put a quarter inch seam stick for canvas along this. The zipper is longer than I need, but I'll go ahead and put it on all of it. Um, and then we'll cut it to size eventually. So we're going to peel off the transfer paper. I'm only going to peel off a little bit at a time. And here's our two inch mark. We want this right in that um, groove up against that seam. So I'm going to work at putting it in there. And you want to be consistent with this because we are going to be using the pattern for the top to make our uh, front curtain. I'm not close enough here, so I'm going to peel it up here and make sure that I get right into that edge. So here's where you want it to end. I'm going to go one tooth beyond that and cut my zipper because I'm going to put a stop on the second tooth. There's our two inch mark. In an effort to not have this be in the way when we're sewing, we're gonna take it all the way off and we'll put it on after it's sewing. It's a locking slider, so you do have to pull on the, on the tabs when you uh, enable to move it. So here we have it in the sewing machine and I'm gonna put my needle in center position. Uh, I think I will. Do I want to go over more? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to put my needle all the way in right position. I think that makes more sense. And I'm going to lower my foot here and I'm going to try to sew on the flange of the zipper only and not go outside of it. But I definitely want to do some reversing here. and then make sure everything stays in place. And then this foot will right up against the zipper's teeth as we sew it down. Okay, we're gonna sew all the way over this and when we get to the other side, we're gonna do some reversing and we'll be uh, done with this uh, front zipper. Now that she's uh, sewing on, we're going to put the slider back on skinny end. This is a skinny and this is what I consider the fat end. It goes on the same side as the box. And remember, it's a locking slider, so you have to pull on the tab to get it on. We're going to go ahead and put this on so we don't lose it. Now we can finally install the California Dodger top. So we have the top completed. Because we have a starter box on this side, I can start zipping over here. You can't see it, but basically I'm just starting the, the zipper for the pocket. And I zip about a foot. Then I'll move 
to the starboard side or the port, whichever way you, you go. And because the starter's over here, we can uh, get it zipped together before it gets tensioned. Like that. And then start it. So we'll continue to put this side on all the way, and then we'll go back to the back portion here. There we go. Now we'll go back here. And it still can move port and starboard. So now we'll need to position it so that it's even on the port side and the starboard side. And I usually don't like to pull on my binding to do this. I like to put my fingers inside of this to get it in the right spot. And we still haven't put the snaps in, so it needs to go more down. Now our lines are here. You can't probably see it, but when the fabric is sewn up, it shrinks up a little bit. So I expect that we will be about a three quarter or a half inch above the lines. I'm going to go check on the port side and make sure that it's even. So before we put the snaps in these uh, uh, pocket ends, uh, I need to use a spring clamp and we need to uh, tension it uh, how we want it on each one of these. And so what I typically do is I pull and I'm looking to get all the wrinkles out of the top and put the wrinkles in the pocket. So that's the reason we stopped the zipper here. We can transfer the wrinkles from the top to the pocket and snap it in place rather than carrying a zipper over here and having the wrinkles be transferred to the top. So I'm pulling over towards the bow and I'm pulling down slightly so it's tensioned and then I'll take a pony clamp and just clamp it in that spot and we've got pretty good tension there. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do the same thing with this one. I'm going to pull it down make sure that there's no wrinkles here. It's nice and tight and clamp it in place when I'm happy. And I'll do the same thing on the port side. So we're gonna remove this clamp. I'll just set it down here for now. I'm gonna tension it with my fingers. Make sure that I like it. Make sure that everything's out tight, pulling down, pulling forward or to the bow. And I like to put the snap not down here, but sort of up about an inch or so. So I take my soapstone and I mark where I want that snap and I'm kind of doing it midship like that. Then what I'll do is I'll take a rotary cutter set on the eighth inch hole cutter. We have several that you can buy and I'll punch a hole through this. This is going through two layers of fabric like that. So you can see that we went through that fabric on the back side that we had folded over. That's why we left it in place. So now I'll take a Sharpie marker with a sharp point, small fine point, I should say, or fine tip, I think is what they call it. I'll pull it tight again. So this is my last option to make any changes because I'm going to put the snap into the frame. So I'm going to pull down. I'm going to pull to the bow because this is the aft one. And I like that. So I'm going to mark it here on the stainless steel. So there you can see it. Let's move this a little bit out of the way. So see the mark. Now I'm going to take a punch and I'm going to put it on that mark and I'm going to give it a few blows. So that my drill bit doesn't wander. I take an eighth inch drill bit. This is for steel and I make sure it's new and I'll put it on there making sure that I'm in the divot and I drill a hole through the one side of the tubing.
Okay, now I like to make it a little bit bigger, so I'll rotate it around a little bit. There we go. I'm gonna use a riveting tool with the Sayerite Snaprite surface mount stud die installed in it. It's just screwed onto the riveting tool. And I'm gonna take a stainless steel uh, rivet and put it through. Those are available at Sayerite. And then I'm gonna take my snap uh, stud and push it onto the die. There's an O-ring in here that holds it in place. And it's stubborn, but you want it nice and flat like that. Okay, so now we take it and we wiggle it because it's going to be a tight fit until it comes up against the die. So it's nice and firm and you want to definitely push hard on this because if you don't then the snap won't be inserted all the way up against the tubing or the surface. And then I'm going to press while I'm pushing down and that starts to roll our starts to compress the end of the rivet with the mandrel until it breaks like it did and there we go and it's and you can see it's nice and solid it doesn't even rotate now if it does rotate a little bit it's not a big deal but this one is super tight which is great so now i'm going to take the press and snap tool there are multiple ways to put snaps in you can use a snap right system if you like but i love this tool i put the button in that and I put the socket on that, okay? So now make sure that the button goes to the outside, but since we have a hole already installed in this, we can easily position this at the right spot. I'm gonna to try to stay out of the camera's way so I can see the barrel poking through the hole. So I'm right in this correct spot and I depress the lever and the snap is installed and you wanna check to make sure it doesn't roll. Yep, it doesn't roll, so I had the perfect pressure. So now I have my button and my stud installed, and I pull on this flap. See this excess fabric? That's kind of nice, because I can actually pull on it to tension it, wrap it around the frame, and snap it. And now we have a one snap installed, and we need to zip that up. And we have no wrinkles on the top, and all the wrinkles are transferred to this pocket at the curve, which is exactly what we want that keeps them out of the top and puts them in the pocket. And now we'll do the same with all the other uh, corners. This completes the top portion of the California Dodger skin kit. You can also order the Dodger frame kit if you do not have a frame. The process for the front curtain and side curtains is covered in a second and third video. The materials and tools list shown here include all of the materials to make the top, the front curtain, and the side curtains. The entire materials list is included in the California Dodger Skin Kit. Most of the items in this kit, besides the umbrella fabric and binding, are white. If you'd like to change those, let us know when ordering. Many of the materials and tools that are listed here will be used in the future videos showing how to make the front curtain and side curtains. To view the tutorial videos showing how to make the front curtains and side curtains, click a link here or down in the description. For more free video tutorials, be sure to subscribe to the Sayrite YouTube channel and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at SailRite, thanks for watching.